on the Mayfly bench, installing a Parsons Green B-Bender into this. Over the years, I've done just under a dozen Parsons Green and Parsons White bender installations into Telecasters. And another one is going into this one. Now, this is a customer guitar. It's not one of mine. And if I'm working on my own guitars, if I screw up, I'm not really that worried about it. I just chalk it up to experience and keep going. It's not the case for a customer's guitar. So for this particular video, I'm not going to be explaining as I go. I'm going to set up the camera, film it, and then do a voiceover explaining what's happening because I don't want to distract myself from the real business of carving a big hole in the back of this thing and not making a mistake. So here is the Parsons Green Bender. It's uh, made by Hipshot and I've installed many of these things. And they keep on making them better and better. This new one is the best that they've ever produced so far. It's, uh, it's going to be a good one. And this is my template. This router template I've used for all of my B-Bender installations. And it's 14 years old. And, uh, but it still works very well. So here's the guitar. It's a uh, Made in USA American Standard. And the first thing that I do is I try and locate where the B string would go if it extended beyond the bridge. And uh, the plan is to draw it on that tape that I'm playing down right now. So after it's all taped up, I get my straight edge. And uh, the first time I do this, I just kind of eyeball it as close as possible to where the actual lie of the B string really goes. And when I have something that I like, I whip up my pen and I draw it right on that piece of tape. And uh, this isn't the only time we uh, measure this particular thing or, or try and determine the line of the B string, but it, it is the first time. Once the B string line and the center line are marked on that piece of tape, uh, we can start stripping off everything else that goes on the guitar. The body has to be totally naked before we can uh, mount it onto the template. So the first thing that comes off are the strings. Once the strings are all off, then we can start disassembling the rest of the guitar. So now we flip it over and we unscrew the neck. So I like to keep the neck in the neck pocket, even when the screws are out, and carefully remove it from the top side. So I like to put the neck into back in the guitar case and I'll have it lying on the bench. But the next thing we do is we take off the uh, control plate and we desolder everything so that we can remove the bridge and the pick card. Didn't take much to get everything on soldered. It was actually fairly stress-free. And um, yeah, oh yes, and that orange towel, that's there to prevent accidental splashing of either flux or solder onto the face of the guitar. If that were to happen, that would really ruin your day. So now it's time to have a closer look at that B string line that we drew previously and make any corrections that we deem necessary. This is actually the most critical spot of all of this installation, aligning that B string pull. Because if it's a little off, then the B string is going to be a little wonky and it's going to cause friction at the bridge. You don't want that. To aid in this, we take the B-bender mechanism and we lay it on top and we try to make sure that everything looks aligned. Uh, what we're looking for here is uh, that the B-bender fits fully onto the body, uh, that the tower is aligned directly with the B-string line, and that the mechanism itself can move up and down without um, interfering with the body at all in any places. This is all very important. This is positioning that one spot is the most critical thing in this whole operation. So I'm here I'm taking out the machinist rule and using that to measure the distance between the base of the B-string pull tower and the hole in the body where the B-string would normally pass through. This measurement, along with half of the diameter of the B-string pull tower, tells us exactly 
where to put the hole in the top of the guitar to accommodate that tower. Now this is critical. If this position is not right, then the hole mechanism won't fit in the body correctly and you won't have a very well functioning guitar. Looks like we need to put that hole 1.765625 south of the hole for the B string. So here we are measuring that dimension and just marking it on the tape. And uh, that's where we're going to drill a big hole. We're just making that location very obvious because the plan is we're going to place the uh, bender mechanism on top just to double check that everything is okay. So here we go. We're placing the bender on top, making sure it's lined up with the crosshairs of that line. And then we have a look everywhere else and make sure the bender is positioned where we want it. So at this point, I always stop and I work on other stuff and I come back to this alignment uh, question the next day. This is so important. You don't want to make a mistake here. So I always sleep on it It check my work the next day. And if I haven't made any mistakes, then that's when I act. So the next thing we do is we work on the other details. For example, cutting the notch in the back of the bridge. So here we have the bridge out. The plan is to remove the saddles and the pickup from there. And so with that, we can work on it properly. So I created a really crude, but effective jig for uh, cutting the back of the bridge. So it's essentially a piece of plywood with holes drilled in the appropriate place, held down by some number two Robertson screws, good old fashioned Canadian hardware here, folks. And then the plan is to clamp that to the edge of the bench so I can have at it with the draw files. Now I much prefer using hand tools for doing work like this rather than a Dremel because the Dremel is rotating and because of that it's very hard to control. The tendency for it to wander along the work is, is pretty high. I don't like that. So the hand tools I can control very carefully, especially with the work clamped down and I can use both my hands on the tool. Once we're all done, it looks like that. A little chamfer on the top and some deburring on all the sides. And it uh, looks pretty good. Now the rest of the preparation. I sharpen up my spade bit and I make sure that my drill press table is square and level. It's the next day. So at this point, I do one final check to make sure things are aligned the way I want them to. This is it. If a mistake is made here, it's absolutely catastrophic. So I've already double checked it yesterday. I'm triple and quadruple checking it today. Once I'm sure that that's where it's going to be, I take my punch and my hammer and I make a mark at that spot. With that mark made, we can peel up the tape. I don't like having the tape on there because it gums up the spade bit. And there is the spot. So with the table set up, you place your body on the table and you get ready to go. This is the moment of truth, no turning back, except you do because you check it one last time. And after you've checked it one last time, then you get ready to actually fire it up and start cutting. And so, well, here we go. So I always let the drill press fully spin down before I pull the bit out of the body. And that is to prevent the bit from dinging up the top of your body while it's still spinning as you pull it up. So far so good. Let's keep going. So I do the same thing in reverse. Before I power up that drill press, I make sure the spade bit is fully inside the work and make sure it is centered in the work. And only then I flip the power switch. Now as you near the end 
the bit will have start poking through the back of the guitar. This is where you stop drilling in from that side. And this is where you turn the body over and start drilling from the other side. The reason for this is that you don't want any blast through to come through the back of the guitar. Now I realize that this portion will, will be covered by the bender mechanism, but if you make a severe enough gouge in it, poking through the back side, um, it may not cover all of it. So I always like to make sure that I stop just when I have an index hole and then turn the body over and start drilling from the other side. There, a perfect hole with perfect edges all the way through. And as a bonus, you get a little disc which came from the middle of the guitar right where the two drill bits met. Once the hole's in place, we lay down the template and get it aligned. There's all sorts of alignment holes on the template itself, from where the B string goes, to where the center line is, to where all the ferrules should be, and also the outline of the guitar body itself. Now, Telecaster bodies are not all created equal. They're all a little bit different. So at this point, you do have to use some judgment to make sure that everything is lined up correctly. Now with the template placed, it's time to strongly affix it to the body. What I do is I screw it down. No, I don't use double-sided tape. It's too big a hole and it's too much of a risk if something were to go wrong. So I screw that sucker down. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a transfer punch to mark those holes. Then you pull the template up, drill holes for where they would be, and um, then screw the whole template down. So I've made sure, of course, that all the holes are aligned in such a place that they're covered by the bender mechanism when everything is said and done. Once the template is screwed down, we get our router together. So I've got a variety of bits I'm going to use. This initial one is very sharp and it's from Stumac. It's really for pickups, but we're going to use this for this first layer to get a nice sharp edge through the paint. And here we are outside. I like to do my routing outside because it makes a huge mess. Um, this particular day, it was around minus eight degrees Celsius. I've got no idea what that is in Fahrenheit but it was a little nippy, especially for walking around in a t-shirt and an apron. Always wear your protective gear, folks. My only compromise for the cold was to actually put those gloves on. And um, well, you know, if you have to work outside, you have to work outside. If you're used to it, it's not really a big deal. So here I am putting the router on the work. And what I'm doing is I'm lining up the bit so it goes through that hole that we just drilled, but it's not touching anything because I don't want that router to touch the work when it's starting to fire up and jump and cause any sort of problem. We're stopping here just to have a quick inspection of the work to make sure everything is going okay. Please note that I let the router spin down completely before I removed it from the work and I also unplugged it while it's just sitting there on the bench. Measuring the depth so far with the calipers. Not quite halfway to the depth we need. So we made our first pass around the perimeter of the work and uh, we're just going to have a look and see how things are, especially along those edges. I don't want anything to be chewed up along those edges. With everything looking very nice so far, it's time to fire up the router again. So what happened here is my camera died, my camera being my iPhone, a device designed in California. I was not terribly impressed. Apparently it didn't like working in minus eight Celsius weather. 
So, you're just going to have to take my word for it that I routed the rest of the body and everything went fine. And the next thing you'll see is the body on the bench once the camera warmed up again. And uh, we'll go from there. So here we are. Only a little bit of fog on our template there from the uh, cold differential from outside to inside. And we're going to pop that template off. And we will check our work. So here we go. And let's have a closer look at this, shall we? Oh, yes. So that looks great. That looks... That looks perfect, actually. The edges are nice and clean. Uh, where the pull tower goes, it has to be a little deeper, so that's why that cavity is there. The job looks really nice. The next thing to do is to place the bender mechanism to make sure it fits and it lines up perfectly. So we're going to place it down and, well, apparently I was fairly satisfied with it. Just going to make sure that the lever can actually move back and forth. Too bad my shoulder is in the way there, but rest assured, that it does indeed work perfectly and uh, everything looks good. Thumbs up. So what we do now is we mark where the holes are needed to be drilled for the screws to fix the bender mechanism to the back of the guitar. Then we center punch where the screws are to go and then we drill them out. Now what I'm doing in this step is I'm chamfering the holes that I just drilled. And what this does is it prevents the finish from pulling up when you drive a screw into those holes. Now you want to do this to prevent that finish from pulling up and preventing the bender mechanism from sitting flat on the back of the guitar. Same is true for a pick guard on the front of the guitar. So this is good practice whenever you're drilling holes through any sort of hard or soft finish. Now with the routing done, now it's time to seal all that bare wood in that cavity to prevent it from accumulating moisture and possibly causing a problem in the future. So I've just uh, taped off the area there and I'm um, just going to use some shellac and just apply it inside. With that done, we're just going to let that dry and then we can start mounting things up. All of the screws are in. All right, now it's time for reassembly. We've got the pick guard and uh, neck pickup back on, and uh, we're just rewiring everything under the control plate. With the neck, I like to slide it in from the top, and I just couldn't help but noticing that little piece of paint or whatever that is. It's really weird. It ends up being covered by the body, so I, I don't really understand. But anyway, back to putting the neck on. I like to put it in from the top and press it down, and then we just uh, grab the screws and the neck plate, and we put them on carefully. Looking good so far. With the strings on the guitar, it's time to find out how well that B string lines up from the pull tower through the bridge all the way to the nut up the neck. Here we are dead nuts perfect. We're done. Let's give it a try. <laughs> 